Hello everyone. Thank you for taking the time to attend this presentation. I am Abdullah Idris. For the past few years, we have been working on the role of NMDR-CMK2 pathway in the long-lasting antidepressant effect of ketamine, as well as their impact on the deriving synaptic remodeling of hippocampal dented gyrus. As it is well documented, one third of stroke survivors experience major depression, making it the most commonly neuropsychiatric complication of stroke. Yet, its mechanisms are still not well understood. Our previous studies have indicated impairment of glutamate circulation, neuroregeneration, and synaptic remodeling in key brain regions of stress rats. It has been previously established that the NMDR system plays a crucial role in cognitive and psychological processes through its ionic regulation and impact on downstream signaling systems, such as the CMK2 family. Previous studies on ketamine as an antidepressant have shown that its administration improved subject behavior and increased synaptic activities through modulation of the CMK2 system. Therefore, the rationale of this work derived from the lack of study investigating ketamine actions on post-stroke depression, the lack of a global view of its impact on the NMDR-CMK2 pathway, and the possible connection with synaptic remodeling. We proceeded method-wise, we proceeded to randomly divide the study subjects, which are SD rats, into four groups comprised of the control, the left middle cerebral artery occlusion group or MCAO group, the MCO plus chronic and predictable mild stress group or MCO CUMS group and the MCO CUMS ketamine group. Aside from the MCO and CUMS procedures, those in the ketamine group received a single dose of ketamine administered locally in the left cerebral ventricles. The concentration was 25 microgram per microliter and each rat was given 1 microliter. The assessment method was comprised of behavioral tests protein quantification, as well as ultrastructure visualization. Our results are as follow. Result, result 1 depicts the pretreatment behavior testing assessing the viability of the MCO CMS model. As seen in the figures, CMS induced depressive-like behaviors as evidenced by the heat map and the prolonged immobility in figures C and B the lesser rearing counts in figure D, and the significant anhedonia as shown in figure F in subjected rats. The post-treatment behavior analysis indicated that ketamine imp improved those performances as early as four hours after administration, as after administration had evident by shorter immobility time, as shown in figure A, more rearing behaviors in figure D, and more sucrose consumption in figure E in treated stress MCO rats. Therefore, the results show that ketamine is not only effective in alleviating uh, depressive symptoms in stroke subject, subjects, but also that those effects are lasting about a week in this case. Next, we proceeded to evaluate and quantify the protein expression of all NMDR subunits in tissues from the dented gyrus region of the study subjects. The results showed that ketamine administration significantly upregulated NMDR2 beta expression and downregulated NMDR2 alpha expression in treated stress rat as shown in figure A and C. Interestingly, it did not impact the expression of NMDR1 and NMDR3 variant. This shows, this shows that not only ketamine administration effects are, independent, are, are dependent on the NMDR complex, but also that ketamine's actions are selectively targeted at specific subunits. Therefore, therefore, we carried out an assessment of each component of the CMK2 family the downstream signaling molecule of the NMDR system. The results showed that similar to its effect on, N on the NMDR complex, ketamine administration actively promoted the phosphorylation of CMK2-alpha, depleting its, its non-phosphorylated form as early as one hour after administration as shown in figure B and D. Interestingly enough, the opposite effects were seen with the CMK2-beta variant as shown in figure A and C. 
The effect lasted for more than two hours and were corroborated by the PCR and immunofluorescence results. Taken together, these results show that ketamine administration through its selective modulation of the NMDR complex elicit a specific shift from activated state to deactivated or vice versa depending on the CMK2 variant's function and necessity. It has been previously established that postsynaptic density proteins such as PSD95 function as anchors to glutamate receptor and related signaling pathways, and morphological changes at the postsynaptic density level are directly linked with synaptic functions. Therefore, we utilize the colocalization analysis to determine the relationship between PSD95 and the NMDR CMK2 pathway and its impact, if any, on ketamine processes. The results indicate that ketamine selectively increased the colocalization of CMK2 beta with PSD95 at the detriment of NMDR2 beta as shown in figure 1 ACDE and that this effect also lasted for about 2 hours. This implies that the effects of ketamine on NMDR CMK2 pathway are much more targeted and complex than previously thought. It is likely that administration of ketamine rapidly initiated a shift in CMK2 beta state from active, which is phosphorylated state, to inactive, thus significantly increasing its availability for synaptic translocation. It has also been established that the balance between the NMDR2 variants alpha and beta or the NMDR2 alpha and NMDR2 beta ratio is an important indicator of experience-driven synaptic plasticity and remodeling, as well as a modulator of the long-term potentiation, long-term depression in adult nervous system. In our case, the analysis indicated a significant and lasting decrease in NMDR2 alpha and NMDR2 beta ratio after ketamine hinting at a possible ketamine-related synaptic remodeling, as shown in figure B. Thus, we use electric transmission electron microscopy to evaluate the impact of such variation on the synaptic ultrastructure of the hippocampal dentate gyrus. The results indicated significant remodeling at the synaptic level 24 hour and one week after ketamine administration as evidenced by increased synaptic density, length and thickness shown in figure A, D, E and F. We then proceeded to evaluate the impact of ketamine on synaptic protein related to the NMDR CMK2 pathway, such as PSD95, MAP2, or neurofilament light. The results showed that ketamine administration differentially upregulated the expression of PSD95, as we can see here in Figure D, an upregulation at one hour and two hour, and neurofilament light at four hour without any significant impact on other assessed protein, which is which are uh, MAP2 and SYN. Taken together, our results indicate that ketamine is also effective as an antidepressant for post-stroke depression, and that its effects are possibly mediated by selective regulation of the NMDR-CMK2 pathway. Additionally, it also showed that ketamine's lasting antidepressant properties are likely to be the result of synergistic effect between ketamine-induced synaptic remodeling and selective increase in protein synthesis. That's all for our presentation. Thank you for your time.